Hello, my name is Andre, and today I'm going to show how to run Talos OS on your local computer under Kimu with the registry mirror cache. Um, so first of all, let's go to the talos.dev website for the documentation and read about the registry cache. Why do we need this? When we launch Telos on our local computer, um, and we're going to launch not a single node, but a multi-node cluster, three masters and one worker, uh, each node is going to pull some Docker images for the containers for Kubernetes, control plane, CNI, the Telos installer, and so on. So we'll basically have four nodes running and all four of them as they run in VMs, they are all going to pull those images independently, which is going to put a lot of stress on your uh, upstream internet connection. So to lower these bandwidth requirements and also to speed up the deployment, we can use the registry cache. On Talos website, there is a documentation about uh, launching these caches. So we're going to run them in Docker as Docker containers. And these for each upstream registry, uh, like the first one is for the Docker Hub, then GCR, Quay, and GHCR, GitHub Container Registry. We're going to run a container for each of them. That's the limitation of the, uh, the, probably one of the easiest is the Docker registry. Each of the containers is getting an environment variable which says which registry it's actually caching for. So whenever we redirect all the image pool requests to this container, it will always check upstream if there is a new version of the image available and whether it already has something cached. If it's already cached, it will be used immediately. If not, it will be downloaded, stored in the cache, and then delivered to the client. Um, so let's try that. Uh, I actually have these registries already running. You can see these containers have some extra, but they're all named after the registry endpoint. For example, this is for GHCR. They are all running with the port 5000 mapped to different host ports. So like from uh, 5000 to 5004. Um, and so I have everything set up. And next I'm going to launch the Talos on Kimo. Uh, for that, there is also a guide on the Talos website, how to do that, how to install Kimo, install all the requirements. I'm going to run the latest Telus release 070 alpha 6. So I can go to this Telus website to releases and then download the assets I will need for that. For that, I will need the Telus CTL, which is a CLI uh, utility to, which will actually use to access the Telus cluster over the API and also to launch such uh, clusters on Kimo or on Docker, and I will need an image of for the Telus Linux kernel and uh, any TremFS image. I already have this all downloaded here. Um, so I have the init TremFS, Telus CTL, and VM Linux. So now I'm going to launch this. I'm doing Telus CTL cluster create. I provide the path to the kernel image. Uh, and also path to the initRMFS image. And then I'm going to say how many masters I want. I want HA cluster with HA control plane, three master and a single worker. And after that, uh, I need to add the flags to configure Talos to use my registry cache. So these flags are here in the documentation. Uh, and also one more thing I forgot, I need to tell uh, the provisioner to use. In my case, I'm using Kimu, so each Talos node is going to run as a VM on my local computer, and I add the registry flags. 
uh, let me copy paste them and paste it here. It looks a bit scary, but there is a flag for each uh, of the registries which are going to be used by Telos. And each of them is redirecting the access to the uh, endpoint. So in this case, it's using the uh, bridge IP. Um, I'm going to launch this uh, while I'm describing it. It's using the bridge IP. So what Telos CTL is going to do is going to create a bridge on my uh, host. Uh, oh, and of course, I forgot to add sudo. Um, the reason is that CNI uh, requires sudo uh, because it's going to create interfaces. So I'm going to run that as root. So launching this once again and getting back to the registry mirrors. So Telstel is now creating the bridge interface on my machine and by default it's going to be uh, to to be assigned the IP address of 10501 uh, and each Telos VM is going to be assigned IPs 0 0.2, 0 0.3 and so on. But that bridge interface is available, it's accessible from the VMs, so they're going to use that. And uh, that's why I'm redirecting access to the registry mirrors, which are running in Docker on my machine with ports forwarded to host. You can now see that cluster is actually uh, booted up the Telos got installed and now the the master nodes, the control plane nodes are building the etcd cluster initial. Uh, you can see that the first node, uh, it 02, it got already booted and 03 and 04 are waiting to, to join the cluster. And once etcd cluster finishes building and all the nodes join, uh, the self-hosted control plane is going to be built using Bootcube. We'll see a message here. Yeah, the Bootcube service is running and bootstrapping the, uh, the Kubernetes control plane uh, components and installing the initial manifests. And when it's done, the Kubernetes control plane will be self-hosted. So it will be running on uh, Kubernetes itself. Um, this process is running pretty fast and uh, because I'm using this registry mirror cache, so basically all the uh, container images uh, are already available and are not downloaded uh, from the internet. So I have to wait uh, for the boot cube to finish. And after that, TeloCTL is going to run the health checks uh, on the cluster, verifying the control plane components, uh, verifying that Every node got registered successfully. We'll see that in a few seconds, hopefully. Uh, so what is in general required to run Talos on your local computer? First of all, this is mostly for testing. Uh, this is not supposed to be the production use, uh, but you can test Talos real, real OS on your computer with different configuration. You can try different settings. You can simulate nodes being down, node crashes, and so on and so forth. This is all available. You can fully uh, test the Talos API. Uh, you can deploy to stuff to Kubernetes. So you can use that as kind of a mini cube because by the time uh, this process finishes, we're going to have a Kubernetes cluster running uh, on my computer. So right now you see Bootcube finished and all the Kubernetes nodes got registered. And now we're waiting for all the control plane com components to be scheduled and running. Um, and it's all done now. So what also happened uh, by the time TeloCTL cluster create finished, the client-side configuration to access the cluster got stored on my computer, so I can now use Telos CTL to access the cluster using the Telos API. And also the kube config was uh, downloaded, so I can use kubectl to access the Kubernetes cluster as well. 
And in the end, LSTL prints the information about the cluster, the nodes, like I said, it's uh, three master nodes and one worker nodes, their configuration, the amount of RAM, CPU, IP addresses. So we can try something. Uh, for example, we can access uh, the first node and check the version of the node. Uh, so Telosail is sending request to the uh, Telos API and I can see that the that's my client information and that's my server information. They are all in sync, exactly the version I downloaded from Telos. I can try different uh, commands, like I can see the list of services running. Um, also, the power of Talos API is that I can submit a list of several nodes I would like to query. So I can see like list of services coming from two master nodes, or I can even launch a small dashboard to quickly check the resources being used in the cluster, uh, CPU memory, processes running, I can switch between the nodes and see what's going on on each of them. But let's get back to Kubernetes. Like I say, kubeconfig was downloaded and merged, so I can try get nodes. Um, and I can see that I have three masters and one worker running. Um, They're running Talos of the version I have specified, the Linux kernel, which comes bundled with Talos. Um, what I can do next, I can try to deploy something to my Kubernetes cluster. So I have a small hello world deployment. I'm going to kubectl apply that. Uh, it got created, so I can see the pods which were created with that deployment. You can see that it's deploying now and now running. Um, I can do whatever uh, I can for any normal Kubernetes cluster. I can query the logs of the pod, but also the service got deployed uh, for this Hello World application. It's running uh, inside the cluster. It's using the CNI, the default CNI, which comes with Telos's flannel, but that is configurable. We can deploy a cluster with Calico or Silum or whatever CNI um, you want. And now what I can do, I can uh, use the port forwarding to get access to this service. So I can do kubectl port forward. As I'm uh, running this on a remote machine, I will specify the address. Uh, to listen on because default local host won't work for me. And next I'm going to say service, hello, Kubernetes. And the ports I'm going to use, I'm going to use 8080 on my computer and 80 on these. And of course I misspelled that. So now when the port forwarding is running, I can access that hello world example in my browser. Yeah, it's working. So uh, I have success successfully deployed a service and it's running and I can access that. Um, and the last thing when I'm done with my cluster, I can clean up all the things. So for that, I'm going to use, once again, I'm going to use sudo. Uh, cluster destroy and provisioner chemo. That is going to remove all the VMs, the logs, the virtual machine disks, tear down the networking. Uh, that's it. Uh, links to the Talos documentation website and guides used in this video are, uh, I will post them to the description of this video below. Thanks for watching.